Hey y'all, welcome to Kamara's Kitchen. Are you ready for today's soul food dinner? We are making some tender, baby spoon tender, braised smothered Cajun lamb chops, as well as some black eyed peas. I'm having some rice, some cabbage with some smoked turkey. Baby, are you ready for this? Let's go ahead and get cooking. Now I'm gonna start off with some lamb loin chops. These are a really affordable cut of lamb. While rack of lamb tends to be about $13 to $20 a pound, lamb loin chops can go from about $6 to maybe about $8 a pound. So I think that is really affordable. Plus, they have a really great flavor. Now, they're not quite as fatty, but slow braised, they're still going to become super tender and melt in your mouth. Now, I am going to be doing this like a smothered Cajun style lamb chop. One thing I love about Cajuns and just people from Louisiana is that they will smother gumbo, jambalaya, or fry just about anything. I remember when I was visiting Louisiana, people were talking about cooking turtle, alligator, squirrel, chicken, beef, pork, veal, honey, everything is cooked in Louisiana. And I just love that about the culture. I'm going to start seasoning my lamb chops and I'm going to use some olive oil as well as some Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of this Maggie sauce. You could use soy sauce instead. And then the rest of the seasonings, I'm basically just going to do to my taste with whatever I have. I'm using a low sodium Cajun seasoning, a salty Cajun seasoning, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, bouillon, whatever you have, you can use. If you like soul food, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because I post new soul food recipes and meals every single week. One thing you're gonna love about being a part of this family is that you are never going to be running out of meal ideas. Honey, I got you. And if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments as well. I'm gonna start dicing up that Trinity. I've cut up one stick of celery. I'm also going to dice one bell pepper. And of course, I ain't leaving that pepper around the rim, baby. <laughs> we ain't wasting nothing around here. And I'm also going to dice an onion. If you decide to make this full meal, you definitely should get started on the lamb first because this has a really long braising time. While the lamb is cooking, you can be preparing the other dishes. Now that my vegetables are prepped, I'm going to add olive oil and just a little bit of butter for flavor to my cast iron skillet. Then I am going to add my lamb. I am going to let the lamb just sit and sear for about three to four minutes on each side. You do not want to move it a bunch because you want that nice brown color, which is going to add that good flavor, baby. Once one side is done, you just go ahead and flip it until all the sides are nice and brown and then you can remove them from the pan. Now I know y'all see that blackness at the bottom and some of y'all are going to be tempted to try to wash the pan. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to wash out your flavor. Pour in some hot water just to loosen that fawn and then use your spatula to just scrape up the bottom. I actually want to cook out a lot of this water before I put in any of my flour. So just let this simmer for a few minutes until you mostly have the oil and the spices left. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of flour and cook this for about two minutes, stirring constantly to toast out that flour flavor. Because the spices were so black, I don't need to cook this very long to make a roux I'm now going to add in the base of that Cajun cooking, which is our Trinity, the bell pepper, onion, and celery. And I'm going to allow this to cook for about four to five minutes. I really want these vegetables to sweat out their moisture and to help speed that process along. I'm going to add a little bit of Creole seasoning, which is salt based, plus a bit of butter. I'm also going to cover these veggies and cook them on low for about three minutes. Doing this is going to make them release a lot of moisture and it's also going to help them add a lot of good flavor to this gravy. Now it's been three minutes and as you can see a ton of moisture has come out and now I'm going to add in that garlic and just saute for about 30 seconds. Then I'm going to add in some water and just loosen up those spices at the bottom of the pan again. 
I know y'all see me just taking my time to build up this gravy. This is what really makes your gravy taste special and delicious, okay? You can't just throw everything into the pot and expect it to have that good flavor. You need to take time to saute your vegetables and things like that to get that good taste. Now, to further enhance the gravy, I'm gonna add some rosemary and thyme. These two herbs pair wonderfully with lamb. I'm gonna add some more boiling water. Now this is gonna look like a lot of water, but we are gonna be braising this lamb for quite a while. So this is all going to cook down. This is one hour into the cook time, and I'm just testing the lamb with the side of my spatula. It's not as tender as I want it, so I just let this simmer for about 30 more minutes. At this point, I am going to flip the lamb to not only make sure that it cooks evenly, but you want both sides to be absorbing the flavor from this delicious gravy. I'm then gonna cover the lamb again and let it cook about 15 more minutes. At this point, my lamb was pretty much done, but I wanted a thicker gravy. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add one potato. This potato is going to absorb a lot of the liquid and also some of the bits will break down into the sauce and give it a great texture. I'm then gonna mix the potatoes in, cover this and allow this to simmer on low for about 25 to 35 more minutes or just until the potatoes are soft. When you are braising meats for a long time, like pot roast or lamb in this case, one tip I have is don't adjust your seasonings too soon. When I first tasted this gravy during the first hour of cooking, I thought that it was a little bit spicy, but after braising for over two hours, all of the flavors mellowed out and it is perfectly seasoned. I This lamb is super tender. The potatoes were delicious. Let me know if you're going to try this lamb recipe. I know you all have eaten fried cabbage before, steamed cabbage, but do any of you guys make smoked turkey cabbage? I'm preparing this cabbage very similar to the way you might make collard greens or mustard greens. Sometimes I just don't like that super strong bacony taste in my cabbage, so I like to make it this way. I'm also going to be preparing this in my Instant Pot, which is great, especially when I have something cooking for a long period of time on the stove. So I've prepped my cabbage, I've cut it into about a half inch slices, and then I am going to slice up one onion. Since I'm going to be preparing this in my Instant Pot and I want this turkey to be falling off of the bone, I am going to start by pressure cooking a turkey wing as well as some salted fat back, some garlic, and some chicken bouillon with about one cup of water. I'm gonna pressure cook this for about 45 minutes. You must do this first because cabbage cooks super quickly and you do not want to be making no baby food by pressure cooking that cabbage for 40 minutes. Mm -mm, don't do it, baby. After you release the pressure, your turkey wing is going to be the definition of tender love, baby. That meat gonna be falling off of that bone. I'm going to take out the turkey wing bone, but I'm gonna leave the meat, and I like to just leave the skin in there. Then I'm gonna add onions and peppers straight into that pot liquor. You're gonna think that the pot liquor is salty, but don't worry, you're gonna add your cabbage so the flavor is going to mellow out. I'm also putting in a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes, brown sugar, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of thyme to season up that pot liquor as well, and then all of my cabbage. Just pack it in there, because once it pressure cooks, it is going to wilt down a lot. I am going to pressure cook this in total for three minutes. You could do two minutes or even one minute if you like crunchier cabbage, but do not listen to anyone that tells you to cook that cabbage longer than three minutes. It is going to just disintegrate. Y'all got to remember that this is cabbage and not collard greens. You know, collard greens can go for a long time, but cabbage can't, can't take it like that, all right? I'm gonna season this to my taste with some Creole seasoning. And baby, you got you some good smoke turkey cabbage baby the pot liquor on this is amazing this tasted so good and now i'm going to start on my black eyed peas first i'm going to saute four strips of bacon until they're crispy and the fat has released i'm going to take a few tablespoons of the fat out because this was just some it was just some real fatty pork okay it just had a lot going on and i didn't want 
all of it of course i'm going to save it and place it to the side now if you got some bacon grease on the side of your stove i know you a real one okay like me i'm now going to add in some of that trinity some bell pepper some celery and some onion I'm going to saute them for about three to four minutes until they're slightly browned and nice and fragrant. At the last 30 seconds, that's when I'm going to add in my garlic. I add that in near the end because I don't want my garlic to burn. I'm going to season this with some smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, a little bit of Creole seasoning. It's important to toast your spices in the oil because that is going to release their flavor and make them very aromatic. I know some of y'all don't like canned beans, but baby, I'm using canned beans today. I'm already braising that lamb for a long time we just doing a lot so canned beans was the way to go but i am going to freshen this up with some fresh thyme and i'm also going to add in a little bit of chicken better than bouillon at this point my black eyed peas are basically done i've allowed them to simmer for about 40 minutes until they are tender now i have those kitchen calluses so i'm just going to reach in that pot and pull out that thyme if you don't honey you better use some tongs if you want to thicken the liquid, you can let it simmer uncovered for the last 10 to 15 minutes. A lot of people be talking smack about Jiffy, but Jiffy know that we going to be rocking together until the end. Y'all know that I love me some doctored up Jiffy cornbread. I just keep it simple. I'm adding in a box of Jiffy. I use half a cup of sour cream, a third of a cup of evaporated milk, an egg. I know Jiffy cornbread is sweet, but I do add in a tablespoon of honey because I just like sweet cornbread. And then I'm putting in a pinch of salt I'm gonna mix this all together and then I'll be spraying my muffin tins and just cooking this according to the package instructions now typically I like to top my cornbread with some honey butter but for whatever reason when I cook these little cornbreads I just feel like it doesn't need the extra sweetness so I will just top this with a little bit of extra butter because to me you can not never go wrong with that butter baby Cornbread is typically the bread I will use to serve as a side with a meal. But let me know, are you a yeast rolls person? Do you typically do biscuits? What is your go-to bread when it comes to a dinner? Now y'all, our meal is complete. When I tell you everything on this plate could hit, Baby, the only way you gonna know is if you make this for yourself. You know I love you and Jesus loves you and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, God bless.